Welcome back to King's Podcast, The Wellness Dive with Lucky. I'm your host, Esther Lucky. Today we are joined by Dr. Mehmood Matt, interventional cardiologist at King's. And today we are marking a World Heart Day. He's here to take a deep dive into everything heart related. Thank you, Dr. Mehmood. How are you? Thank you for joining us today. Thank you for having me. Yeah, uh, just before we start, I have to ask, do you mend broken hearts? Oh, we do, actually. <laughs> we do. Um, you do? It is actually, yeah, it's ironic that we do. Oh. Um, now that you asked, I have to answer this, that <laughs> broken heart is actually a syndrome, it's a condition. And in certain conditions, when people are met with a certain shock, now that shock could be physical or emotional. And I've seen patients after having a dog dead or losing a parent or a child, mm -hmm. they develop a, a condition which mimics a heart attack. Wow. A perfectly heart attack disaster. So they can come with the ECG all over the place and they are treated as if it a heart attack. The only difference is that they have a normal arteries in the heart mm -hmm. and they have a very typical way of pumping in that period. Now it recovers whether it's in minutes or hours or days and that particular way of pumping the heart is called takasubu in Japanese. Ooh. So this takasubu is actually a pot that they use for catching the octopuses. If you look at it and if you look at the heart at the time in that condition, it looks like that pot actually. So in olden days, people used to say the diet that was just shock, but that's, that's very true that it is called broken heart syndrome or takasubu syndrome. Wow. But good news about it that <laughs> people recover from it fully and it's not a permanent condition. Wow, not the answer I expected, but <laughs> very good to know. Yes. Yeah, yeah. One day I may just come to you. <laughs> I hope not. Uh, so, um, as I said, you are an interventional cardiologist here yeah. at Kent. What does that actually entail? So, um, cardiology is basically a, a general physician who deals with all matters of the heart. So, we deal with something that is directly or indirectly related to the heart. So, you can say the blood pressure, the cholesterol... Uh, the blockages in the arteries, the weakness of the heart muscles, uh, the blood flow issues, all of them, they are under our territory. Okay. The interventional cardiologist is somebody who actually tries to treat them interventionally, going inside through a keyhole, uh -huh. and they find a blockage, particularly in the, in the blood vessels that supply the oxygen okay. and the food to the heart muscle. Um, we identify that, we define how bad it is, and if that's treatable, we treat it there and then. Okay. So that is somebody, broad terms, called interventional cardiologist. However, the scope of practice is way bigger than that. So um, we also do the replacement of the valves. We sort out sometimes the valves, which are too leaky. Mm -hmm. And over the time, this is just getting wider and wider. So in olden days, we were just considered somebody who treats a heart attack or anginas. But now we, we treat a lot more problems. Mm -hmm. The important thing is that without cutting your heart open. Wow. Every time I'd hear about a cardiologist, the first thing I'd think about is cutting the heart open. No, actually, I, I think that stigma of, of having a fear of going to cardiologists, it should be washed now. Because mm -hmm. it, it's, it's a very simple field. It is, there's nothing complex in it. Uh, I would say the most black and white specialty in the, in the health medicine is related with the heart. It's been extensively researched studied over the last particularly last three four decades so um, the management or the treatment options out there available they not only treat patients but over the time we are able to cure people as well so um, we're not scary absolutely and I think now is the time when people should take the matter of health in their, in mm -hmm. their hands mm -hmm. firmly and they should seek a cardiologist we're not saying that you need a stent in your heart, you need to cut your heart open, but at least for a frank conversation, which I think is, is, is necessary in, in today's day and world. So today is World Heart Day. Yeah. And since uh, heart health is very close to your heart, yeah. why do you think the day is so significant? I think the, the World Heart Day that gives us the opportunity to... Um, to refresh our memories and it kind of focuses our attention towards an important issue. We mustn't forget that the heart conditions, they still kill at least uh, the top three 
okay. uh, types of deaths in the world right now. Yeah, I was so just reading about that. That's right. Yeah. So the odds are quite high. And we tend to be, we are, we are driven by our symptoms. However, we have started to see a lot of problems in asymptomatic patients as well. Um, all of these facts, they drive us towards the fact that we need to educate ourselves towards it. Um, many times, um, the public, general people, they don't have an idea about what is blood pressure. Is it just a transit right in your blood pressure or is it a condition? How to treat the cholesterol? How to, well, how to give the importance to the diabetes we do? What is the impact of smoking? And it's not just about telling off somebody who mustn't smoke, but we need. Now, the fact that if you stop smoking, what are your chances of you not having a heart problem or what are your chances of having it if you continue to similarly i i also have started to believe more and more that the lifestyle changes and i'm not just saying it because of world heart day uh, the the lifestyle is of an impen, Im, immense importance really in our field we have started to see patients who have problem without having any known, well-known risk factors. And we think that that might be due to the environmental factors. So what we're inhaling, what we are eating, okay. and most of that is farm products. So you can imagine how much of toxins and poisons are directly or indirectly going in. Okay. And if we think that we're running and we're neutralizing it by doing exercise, that probably is not enough. But sometimes you need to have a little probe in yourself by doing a simple test of an ECG, seeing a cardiologist, asking what track should I adapt in the next three months and so mm -hmm. um, that just helps them. That's really it. So I think that's absolutely important that people take that seriously and educate themselves about how to look after the heart. Mm -hmm. I mean, that's, that, that's, that's what keeps you that's alive. Just, that's it. That's right. Yeah. So, uh, Doctor, uh, you just mentioned that, uh, about the risk factors. Yeah. Uh, so most people who have these risk factors end up having a heart disease. Or yeah. cardiovascular diseases. True. Do these diseases, conditions, have an, an age limit? Because when you hear right. about heart disease, the first thing that goes to mind is something, so somebody a bit older. You're right. Um, I would say the uh, the spectrum is changing. The canvas is changing its colors as well. We, 20 years ago, I'd say that if somebody comes in their 50s, you would write, a young person would arrive with a heart condition. Mm -hmm. You won't anymore. Um, it is being studied as what's causing it, but we have started to see patients in their 30s and 40s quite regularly from all the cultures. Uh, and I'm, I, I would like to emphasize on the fact that you don't actually have to have the recognized factors that cause a heart problem. You talk, you talk about diabetes, you talk mm -hmm. about smoking, the blood pressure and cholesterol. And genetics, for example, this is a great important and genetic predisposition of having a heart problem that tends to be quite early. So uh, if somebody has uh, their father having a heart problem in the 35 age, it's likely that they might have it too in the similar age uh, and they might have a very normal cholesterol. So mm -hmm. it is not always that if you don't have a, an obvious risk factor, you can't have it. It is definitely changing. And I, as I hinted earlier in my previous um, sentence that the 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 lifestyle and the environmental factors have a lot to do with it. I just cannot believe that we inhaling so much of you know toxin stuff every day. Yeah, we we living in an industrialized world. Although there's no scientific data that proves it beyond doubt that that these are causing directly a heart damage, but I'm sure that's something to do with it. There is some data accumulating supporting my conspiracy theory but i can't just believe that it's not doing anything all of all of, to all of us similarly the explosion of fast food um the, the the explosion of the or the expansion of the farmed food consumption you know everything that you and i eat the red mm -hmm. meat and the white meat and the fish and everything else is actually farmed how it is farmed that is also another debate and is it causing a problem with us it that is yeah i'm clear <laughs> but you would like to think it probably is yeah. So I think we need to look at those factors now. We need to focus on them more than the ones that conventionally we, we focus at. Yeah, yeah. So you've mentioned a few uh, factors. Yeah. Which are the top three 
from your own experience or in your own opinion? I think the in terms of you having a risk of heart problem, diabetes is the top. Smoking and mm-hmm. diabetes are probably in the same category. So I'd say if somebody is a smoker and diabetic, that's a you know, you know, pretty high chance that they will have a heart problem sometime in their life, which they wouldn't have had if they weren't doing that. Uh, having high cholesterol, that also predisposes you having high uh, chances of having a heart problem. <laughs> then genetic factors, uh, they, uh, they are, that's quite uh, disappointing in a way that uh, you tend to see in younger people who learning from their history, they try to keep themselves so fit, but when the genes get active, they end up having a heart problem. So there are three most important ones that I consider myself in my category. So mm-hmm. let me move your side a bit. Uh-huh. Which is the one of the strangest cases you've ever had? Honestly speaking, every day, every day you see strange something, one. a strange one. Mm-hmm. But I was, before I came here, I was actually telling somebody a story about a patient who came, uh, I'd say a couple of weeks ago, and this guy is as fit as you can imagine. He had COVID. And after COVID, he had a CT scan for his chest just to look at his lungs. And whilst they did a CT scan, they found a little speck of calcium in his heart. Normally, there shouldn't be any calcium. But, you know, they did the right thing. They sent him there. The guy had no symptom whatsoever. And um, I said, well, we need a focus CT scan on your heart. And when we did it, we were absolutely shocked. Well, he was absolutely shocked that at least one of his arteries is 100% blocked. And the other wow. was 80%. And as I said it again, and I repeat, that he had no symptom. So we ended up treating him and we successfully opened all his arteries without a problem. He's mm-hmm. gone home and fine, except that he's still in a shock. The guy had a family history that he wasn't aware of. Uh-huh, the genetic um, factors. But he was 52 years old. But imagine somebody who's a runner, who's a marathon runner. Mm-hmm. And I, on this note, I'd like to share that I have a list of seven patients in the last two years that I've accumulated who are marathon runners spinning instructors and, uh, they, have no and they have not only problems mm-hmm. significant problems um which is you know not not regular occurrence mm-hmm. so i would say that on top of my head that's the latest thing that i can i can think of well wow. but you do see almost every day yeah yeah uh, actually it explains a lot when somebody says uh, so and so is just running or they were sleeping they are so healthy and they just died that's right on the spot they just that's died. right you see, that's the point that if you if you can mention if you don't have any symptoms, then you say that how can I have a problem? But your first symptom might as well be a sudden death or a sudden arrest, right? So it is absolutely imperative for people, particularly with the risk factors. I would say men, probably 35 plus for sure, and women after the menopause particularly, mm-hmm. have your cholesterol check, have your sugar status check. Have yourself subjected to a bit of exercise and with an ECG and a scan of the heart. These data, they help us putting you in a certain category and say, you know what? You are a low risk profile person, so I'm going to see you in a couple of years time just for (laughs) reassessment. But if somebody is at risk, that that can be looked at further. And before that penny drops, you take them off the edge. As we know, you're a big champion of preventative heart health. Absolutely. And we have those here at King's. What does that entail? So does somebody just uh, wake up one morning and decide uh, I need to get my heart checked, even if even if I don't have any symptoms? It could all? be it could be as random as that. However, mm-hmm. I think uh, it, it, it's all about educating yourself. You can't just instill that in somebody after a ten minutes talk. It's a way of living, and we're living in a very competitive and a very industrialized society anywhere in the world. The stress is mounting. People are living less and less healthily. I'd say take 10, 15 minutes of your time. Think about yourself. I think, and I say that to my patients, the last person that you give time to is yourself. So you don't think about yourself. You don't think about, will I have a heart problem? How can I protect myself? Mm-hmm. Once you start educating yourself, you read about it. Yes, in some cases, you can develop some fears. But once you get to a cardiologist, then they should answer all your fears and questions. Mm -hmm. And of course, if you are good and healthy, that puts you at ease and that would inspire you to stick to the right path. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. All right, Dr. Sanky. So when they come to you, you run the test. Some they're good to go, others not so good to go. Whatever kind of damage they have in in their heart, is it reversible? 
I guess here we're talking about treatment. And can it go back to 100% what it was? Uh, absolutely. Oh. absolutely. Yes, the answer is yes. So unless you come <clears throat> at least two days after having your heart artery blocked completely, the damage is reversible, mm -hmm. uh, albeit to some degree. Um, but most cases, when somebody develops chest pain, the advice, the very strong advice is that the muscles are minutes and minutes are muscle. So the longer you wait, the more muscles you're going to lose. So don't sit home thinking about, oh, it's my stomach. Come home, come, come, you know, leave your place. Come with somebody, a chaperone, your partner, wife, or husband. Come to emergency, have yourself checked. And in the emergencies, you only need an ECG and a basic blood test. And that puts you in a low risk category. And if you do have a heart attack developing, mm -hmm. as much as it might be a shock to you, yet you'll be identified at an earlier stage. And if you identify it earlier, there's no damage. And even if you have damage, it's recovered within two to three months. In some patients who come, let's say, a week later, because they did not recognize the symptoms earlier. Unfortunately, in those patients, the damage has been done already. It's like you cut off the water supply of the field, and you know after that it's gone barren. And after that, you can water as much as you want. Mm -hmm. And it won't turn back to the yeah. fertile land. Yeah. So that's a kind of analogy, I'd say. But the sooner you do that, the better. Mm -hmm. Two days is the maximum limit. The idea is that you come there as soon as possible. And uh, like you mentioned earlier, you're not there to cut up hearts. No, the, uh, that, that's, that's quite old school. You know, we, we're not bypass surgeons. And, uh, and we're not talking about, I mean, the exceptional cases, I would say, in, two, three percent of the cases maybe, you do need an open heart surgery because you have a lot and lot of blockages in the heart which mm -hmm. cannot be treated mm -hmm. from a keyhole. But I'd say 90% plus of the patients when you go through a keyhole which is done from the wrist and it is done under local anesthesia, so you're awake and you're talking to me just like we are talking, mm -hmm. and whilst we are identifying the problem, we're able to fix it there and then. Mm -hmm. And, you know, it, it depends on how simple or complex a problem. It could be any 10 minutes to 50 minutes in terms of fixing it. Oh. Most of the time, patients go home the same day or maximum a night stay over in the hospital. Oh, that's impressive. It's a good experience from the patients because we have, uh, at King's, we have introduced this in, in the past or in many other places. The patient's stay is too long and that that, that doesn't impress the patient many times. Mm -hmm. When we were, we were we, when we were practicing in the UK, many times patients come and they just sit in the rocking chair and they have the procedure done. And after that, they just wait for another two hours in the same rocking chair and they go home. Oh. We're not at that stage, but we're going in that direction. We want people to come, have themselves treated and mm -hmm. walk home. Thank you, doctor, for joining us today. You're welcome. Ladies and gentlemen, today is World Heart Day. As you heard the doctor, keep your heart checked. Preventative health. And to book an appointment with Dr. Mahmoud Bhatt, call 04-247-7777. Until next time, see ya.